On this episode of On the Trail, I'm going to give you an update on how our front axle build is going. But first, some highlights from the Tennessee Mountains Jeep Jamboree. Let's get going. So right now here at Winrock Park, once again in the great state of Tennessee, you may remember a prior episode where we pre-ran some trails for an event. Well, this is the event. It is a Jeep Jamboree USA event here at the park, and we're going to be having some fun. going to give you guys a little idea of what takes place here. But again, right now we're here at Trail Lineup in the morning. Just a few Jeeps starting to roll in. You can kind of see beautiful day out there. A little bit of clouds, a little bit of sun. Should be a good time. Stay tuned. In total, there are around 130 Jeeps at the event. The group I was leading had about 18, which was one of the larger groups there. A quick driver's meeting was held before the various groups departed for the day. Our first stop was the top of Winrock with its amazing views of the valley. If you're not familiar with Jeep Jamborees, they are family-oriented trail riding events that take place throughout the United States. Most events offer multiple trail rides with varying difficulty, so no matter if you're new to trail riding or a seasoned driver, you should be able to find something to your liking. My group, for example, was rated 4 to 6 on a 1 to 10 scale. Lunch breaks are taken trail side and give chance for folks to talk about the day's events as well as all things Jeep related. The trails at Wind Rock offer a variety of terrain and as the name would suggest there is no shortage of rocks. Piece of cake. You're good. Come a little towards me. Right there, good. A little more, just a little bit right there. Right there, good. Stay on that line. You're good, nice and slow. You didn't need that. You're good. <laughs> right there, come to me. Nope, a little bit more driver. Nice and easy. Now, turn driver looking passenger, right there, good. We'll clear that. You got a good line right there. Nice and easy. Next up was this ditch my... obstacle, which is just a little past those two prior rock garden areas. Yep. It's not good. difficult, but you want to make sure you get the right line to avoid underbody good. contact as much as possible. And you certainly want to go ahead and keep more to the driver's side, as the passenger side, it does kind of fall off into that right loose there. gravel area. Everyone did really well with just a few minor contacts yep. underneath the go Jeeps. Ahead. A little more. Go ahead. Yep. Keep coming up. Good, now come back to me. Nice, nice and easy. Good, back's gonna come down. Might get a little scrapage, but I think we'll be all right. Turn a little bit passenger for me. Go ahead. There you go. Move a little bit driver for me. One more, there you go. We're gonna go back passenger a little bit. Concentration. Right there. Nice and easy, slow. Come a little bit more, more, more towards me. Yep, there you go. Give it a little gas. Your bumper a little bit. You're all right. Go ahead. Give a little gas. There you go. I'll go back, passenger. Look at that. Like a champ. All right. A little bit driver. There you go. That's good. Nice and easy. A little bit passenger. Right there. Just drive that line. Come forward a little bit. You got the bumper down.
come up this road where Kevin and I are, you go, as you get into it, it's going to need steady power. Don't try to creep over. Trail 26 is one of three Badge of Honor trails located in Wind Rock Park. The program was set up by Jeep to recognize outstanding trails throughout the United States. Beautiful piece of cake. Bonus on that, if you happen to be a Jeep owner and complete one of these trails, you can log into the Badge of Honor app, nice. submit your information of completion, and eventually Jeep will send you a cool badge which you can display. You're good on the side. You good here? Out, out, out. So right now we're backing up a Jeep down Trail 26. This one, this Jeep's backing up. Uh, we've got a pop tire over here on this one. It's in a little bit of a precarious spot. We're going to get it up to about this spot, change the tire out and we should be good to go. Everybody chipped in, we got the tire changed out, and we were soon headed on our way. If you'd like to learn more about the Jeep Jamboree program, be sure to visit their webpage at jeepjamboreeusa.com. Welcome back to the garage. Let me give you an update of how things are going with this front axle build. Again, this is a Dana 60 out of a 2005 uh, or newer F250 or 350. You can find these pretty much in local wrecking yards around you. Price will vary depending on where you live. That being said, I've broken down this pretty good. I removed the knuckles, the axle shafts. Um, I've gone ahead and prepped the passenger side over here. I've gotten the large brackets off of it. Um, and that passenger side is looking pretty good. Got a little bit of finish work to do on it. But this driver's side is really where the meat and potatoes is. Everything's kind of condensed in this one small area. Be really careful with your cuts over here. Uh, one of the ones I'm working on right now is removing about two inches of the cast section from around the tube. You've got some plug welds in there you need to be aware of um, that you're going to have to get out or remove or cut in such a way that you can go in back later and, and get rid of them. Um, I would also recommend using some kind of a depth gauge to make sure you're not going too far into the tube as you cut through that cast section. Again, if you do get some minor nicks in the tube, you can just go ahead and you know, weld them all up and then grind them down smooth. Not a worry or, or problem there. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I've got up on the workbench right now. Up here on the bench, of course, we've got the truss. I've gone ahead and tack welded this together just to make sure everything fits well. The instructions are really good, and again, it's all tab and slot, uh, you know, keys together like that. So not a big deal at all with it. I don't want to do any final welding on these sections to this section until you test fit it on top of the axle, make sure it all lines up okay. Then you can go ahead and burn this in and then burn this to the axle. Now you're going to be using two different, I guess, methods on this. The section that's over the tubes, you can just go ahead and MIG weld those on like you would normally, uh, moving around so you don't put too much heat in one area. But when you get to the section that was welded to the center section, that's cast, and you're going to need to go ahead and heat up that cast several hundred degrees before you start welding it. And then once it is welded, you're going to need to go ahead and do a controlled cool down with the heat um, so that it doesn't crack. So kind of keep that in mind. And again, I'll show you guys how that works out for me in a future episode. Um, one of the other things I wanted to talk about here was the steering knuckles. These things are heavy. I'm going to be reusing these. They're fine to reuse. And these are the stock ball joints still in it. I cleaned up the knuckle a little bit, put some, you know, uh, weldable primer on here. Um, but I had planned to go ahead and just reuse stock ball joints in here, you know, replace these worn out ones. But as I was looking at these things and kind of, you know, moving them around a little bit in the process of taking them off and, and cleaning it up, I just didn't feel really good about running really big tires on these particular type of ball joints. Um, I'm sure they're fine for a stock vehicle, you know, but when you're talking about doing the kind of stuff I want to go out and do with the Jeep, I just didn't feel too good about these. So I went ahead, hopefully this will stay there. Hey, it will, magic. Uh, and I invested in a set of these. These are ball joint deletes from American Iron Off-Road. And I think these are gonna be a really nice upgrade to the stock ball joints. Let me give you a little bit closer look at these. Um, these do get welded in uh, to the knuckle. Again, this is a part that gets welded in. And inside here, inside here you've got a replaceable uh, center section. It's got a lock ring on it. The lock ring comes out of cover and you can go ahead and rebuild that. If something's gonna wear out, it's gonna be that section, but it's easily replaceable should it do that. And then you've got this section right here, this aluminum spacer. You can kind of see how it's machined. It's off center so you can adjust for caster depending where you center it uh, up on the axle itself. So that's kind of nice too. And then this thing 
you know, this is your, you know, essentially your bolt now, if you will. It's just a lot beefier and bigger, right? I mean, that speaks volumes and strength right there. And then same thing on the bottom. Let me set this one over here. Similar type of concept. You know, you've got this part, which mirrors this section down here. And then you've got your same style uh, rebuildable section here that you can do. Bolt size looks to be about the same on this one between these two. Yeah, pretty similar on that diameter on those. But I just like the idea of having these on here versus going with, you know, a stock type ball joint. Uh, again, reasons for that. I don't trailer my rig. I do drive it. That's one of the questions I did have for this particular part. Heard from several people who have them. Uh, and they said, yeah, driving it's fine. They haven't run into any issues. Uh, again, small sample size, but I feel good about that. Uh, in addition to that, you know, one of the weak links on the ball joint 60 is this top ball joint. Um, if there's going to be a problem with it, it's usually this one. And then sometimes when this goes, you know, things get pulled and, and the bottom one goes. The bottom one's usually a little bit more well respected than the top one up here. But I decided, you know, if you're going to replace the top, you might as well go ahead and replace the bottom with it. So hopefully that gives you guys an idea about, uh, you know, the, the ball joint deletes. Uh, you can visit their website for more information, of course. They do make them for other things besides the uh, Super Duty axles. Uh, they make them for the stock JK axles as well. I know they're working on some other product lines as well. So check those out and see if it might be something you are interested in. Hopefully I've given you an idea of where I'm at in my axle build project. Again, it is not something that is done quickly, at least for me. And I hope to have this fully welded up to the axle in short order and provide you all an update with it. I will say one thing, if you are thinking about taking on a project like this, right now throughout the aftermarket, there are a lot of supply and demand issues. Things are being delayed when you can get a hold of them. So kind of keep that in mind for your own time frame if you want to take on something like this. Anyway, be sure to do all that stuff down below so you don't miss any future episodes. I hope you all have a great day and I look forward to seeing you on the trail.